Hi, welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody's doing well. We've got another video here going over three stocks which look like good buys for the month that's coming up, which is October 2021. I've got three very different stocks and I hope they each offer something different for investors out there. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you find value in it. The first company we have is Coupang, who are a South Korean based e-commerce company who mainly provide home goods, apparel, beauty products, fresh food, grocery, electronics and restaurant services through Coupang Eats. Pretty much anything that you want brought to your front door, they'll do it. They're like a combination of Amazon and Just Eat and their growth accelerated massively last year with revenue of almost $12 billion up 90% from $6.3 billion the previous year which is a crazy amount of revenue growth. They are a company not without drama. As recently as June this year a fire broke out at one of their largest logistics centres that unfortunately killed one person. It caused massive uproar surrounding safe working and labour practices around their factories. And this could be one of the reasons why the share price has come down a bit from its 52 week highs. More positively, Coupang when they were privately listed were ranked second on CNBC's list of top 50 disruptors in 2020 due to their innovation surrounding e-commerce. South Korea is one of the most densely populated countries in the world which makes it possible to offer same day delivery on a lot of services. Revenue growth is expected to fire off like a rocket with continuous growth from 2020 revenue of nearly 12 billion to 33 billion by 2023. They do still make a loss and not currently profitable as they are expanding to meet these revenue targets and further develop their full end to end logistical empire. However, positive EBITDA is expected in 2023. Balance sheet is robust with cash as of June 2021 at $4.3 billion which we'll look into shortly. Total net revenue showed continued growth of 70%. Q2 2021 marked its 15th consecutive quarter with over 50% year over year growth. Active customers are up 26% year over year to $17 million and, re and revenue per customer grew 36%. Gross profits were $658 million in Q2 with growth of 50% year over year excluding a $158 million inventory write-off related to the fire at the logistical centre, this would have been $860 million. Fresh revenue grew 100% year over year, exceeding 2 billion run rate and the contribution margin improved by nearly a thousand basis points over the last year. Each revenue nearly tripled over just the past two quarters and the loss per order was down 50% year over year. So for me, I think the growth drivers behind this company are solid and it should be able to continue over the coming years. This slide just reiterates the previous points, clearly showing the growth on the top line, customers and net revenue per active customer, they're all moving in the correct way. Cash is sitting in a really strong position with 4.3 billion, which will cover losses and fund growth drivers for the company going forward. Virtually zero debt of a company of this size and this is mainly due to them issuing shares as a method of raising funds. We can see that they're still making losses due to high cost of sales but on a net loss divided by the shares in circulation this is down from a loss of $5.81 per share in 2020 when the company was, was private to a loss of 30 cents in the most recent quarter. Share price is $28 given at a market cap of $50 billion. It shed almost 50% of its value since IPO in March with a price to sales ratio of under 4, which for me it looks like fair value in my opinion. Future growth looks massive in this company and the current price is right around where they wanted to IPO which is between $27 and $30. We've got 11 analysts covering this one, all bullish with an average price target of around $45 giving upside of 55% from current prices with the highest price target of $61. I think that this company could be an excellent long term play, there's no doubt about it that it'll be volatile but with e-commerce expected to grow for many years into the future, by having such an established end to end logistical network it should be hard for competitors to develop such a service better than what Coupan can offer. Stock number 2 we have is Wynn Resorts who develop, own and operate casino resorts that integrate accommodation in a range of amenities including dining outlets, retail offerings and entertainment theatres. They are split geographically into 3 locations with 2 in the US, 1 in the Las Vegas Strip and they also have one Boston Harbour out in Massachusetts. The other location is being in Macau, located on the south coast of China. Revenue across all segments of the business was destroyed during Covid with nearly 50% decline in the US business and more than 75% decline in Macau. I think that people will want to be back experience these type of resorts again. With foreign travel now getting back on track, I would expect good growth over the next 12-24 to 24 months. 
Financial year 2020 shows a total bloodbath with revenue of 2 billion with negative earnings and with a net loss of 2 billion. Revenue is expected to make a steady comeback with earnings out into 2023 not too far away from pre-COVID levels where $6.5 billion is expected as well as positive earnings. The balance sheet is a little bit more stretched recently than it has been and this is likely due to poor earnings and being so heavily involved within luxury real estate which is the only real cause of concern. However, net debt is expected to start to normalise out to 2023. Looking into Q2 earnings, revenue has made a really promising comeback with revenue of $990 million, up more than a thousand percent from the year prior, but it was only $85.7 million. Still reporting a loss of $131.4 million, or $1.15 per share, compared to a loss of $637 million, or $5.97 for the same quarter last year. Adjusted property EBITDA at the resort increased 165.5 million, 96.7 million, 208.8 million and 107 million at each of the resorts, Wynn Palace, Wynn Macau, the Las Vegas operations and Encore Boston Harbour respectively. Matt Maddox, the CEO, gives an encouraging statement saying that they're seeing a strong return of their guests and with adjusted property EBITDA at their US operations well above pre-pandemic levels. He also mentions WinBet, which is their online casino and sports betting app, but please, please be aware that if you own this stock, you will not be owning WinBet as this is being listed as a separate company, which is why when we look at these earnings, this is all to do with the physical resorts. During 2020, all resorts were closed down for varying lengths. Likewise with the reopening, it's all been staggered with different venues having different restrictions. In August 2021, in response to a COVID outbreak, the government of Macau announced enhanced measures including tighter border patrol and strict COVID testing requirements. In May 2021, Las Vegas operations were allowed to operate at 100% levels. On July 2021, the Governor of Nevada issued an emergency directive reimposing mask protection and in April, the Governor of Massachusetts announced a phased reopening and in May signed an executive order rescinding the COVID-related restrictions and limitations. With restrictions now eased, this should allow them to get back to more normal levels of trading. Viewing the resort operations within Macau, the operating revenues of Wynn Palace were $270.4 million, up from $8.7 million the year prior, with positive EBITDA of $53.6 million, compared to a loss of $110.9 million, with VIP tables, win percentages at 3.95%, above proposed ranges. Wynn Macau had operating revenue of $184 million, up from $11.9 million last year, with again positive EBITDA of $14.1 million, compared to a loss of $82.6 million last year. VIP table game win is 6.64%, slightly below the lower end of their targets, which is 2.7. Las Vegas operations came in at $355.1 million for the second quarter, up from $64.9 million last year, with positive property EBITDA $133.2 million, up from a loss of $75.6 million in 2020. Table wins come in at 23.2%, which is within their aim of 22-26%. to 26%. And their Boston Harbour Resort has $165.2 million in Q2 2021, positive EBITDA of $46.9 million, up from a loss of $53.8 million in 2020. Table game wins are at 21.2%, and this is also within the range between 18 and 22%. The balance sheet, as we said, the balance sheet as of June 2021 has cash equivalents of $2.8 billion, with total and long-term debt of $11.92 billion. Comparing the year-over-year -year quarters, we can get a good breakdown of what areas are performing well and making a strong comeback. Total operating revenue, as we said, is up more than a thousand percent. Casino rooms nearly up three times. Food and beverage doubled. Entertainment, retail, and others up massively. With the overall loss dramatically improved from five dollars ninety-seven to one dollar fifteen, as previously mentioned. The share price is currently at around eighty-five dollars, given a market cap of under ten billion. The share price is down almost 40% from its 52 week highs and if we put up the overall chart you can see how the share price closely follows times of economic growth or decline. So I would say if, if you feel that we are moving into more prosperous times then this could be a good entry point into the stock. 14 analysts covering this given an average price target of $113 which would equate to 33.3% upside roughly at the time of recording this video. 4 buys, 2 outperform, 8 hold and 1 with no opinion. The last company we have here on the list is American Electric Power, nice and easy to understand business model as they produce, transport and distribute electricity, serving 5 million customers over 11 states. Utility companies offer an element of safety and usually higher than average dividend yields, appealing to more income focused investors. 
We can see how their revenue is divided into the separate areas, with vertically integrated utilities providing close to 60% of their revenue. Overall, revenue has been declining from 2018 out to 2020, but you'll notice that EBITDA, net income, and earnings per share has been improving to contrast this, alongside a growing dividend. Revenue is expected now to begin to return to growth out to 2023, with revenue of $17.7 billion expected. Net debt is with most utilities is quite high and expected to hover around the 5.6 to 5.75 leverage ratio. Year over year, GAP earnings per share and operating earnings per share are showing good growth with GAP EPS increasing from $1.05 to $1.16 and operating earnings per share increasing from $1.08 to $1.18 with year to date performances showing very similar improvements. We can show how the growth in the operating EPS has been achieved with vertically integrated utilities providing 45 cents, down 10 basis points a year ago, but still generating the most. The biggest growth can be seen in the transmission hold co division, providing 34 cents per share, up, up 15 cents from last year, and transmission and distribution showing small consistent growth at 2 cents this year. Residential sales have been slowing over the last year, as can be expected due to people returning to their offices and workplace from having worked from the house throughout 2020. Commercial and industrial are now making good progress with both reporting good double-digit growth in Q2 this year, showing the shift back to a more normalised way of life. Overall sales are up 6.3% versus the previous year. As we mentioned, debt is quite high and it has been increasing. But saying this, it still remains within the company's long-term target with funds from operations to total debt being kept in the low to mid-teens where it currently sits. The company right now is fairly valued with a PE of 17.4 and forward PE of 16.4 with a very, very respectable dividend yield of about 3.6% with a bang on the money payout ratio of 62%. Out of the 19 analysts that cover this stock, the average price target is $97, given roughly a 90% increase from current prices, and if you factor in that nice dividend, the total returns could be over 20%. 7 buy ratings, 6 outperform, 5 hold, 1 underperform, and 1 without an opinion, with no sell ratings on the stock. So yeah, I really like the look of this one as well. For myself, I quite like getting the dividend payments coming through every quarter, so this is something that I'm closely following. And that'll bring us on to the end of the video. If you're still here, please drop a like, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you found this useful and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers!